So this is part two of the video. I want to just pick up where I left off. So I have another story to share with y'all that's connected to this entire story that I'm sharing with y'all. It's connected to video number one. So when our lease was ending at the condo, my husband, he kept on asking me if our daughter could stay and our son could stay with his mom and sister for the summer. At first I said no because my daughter was on punishment for having bad grades. But then he kept asking me, then I finally just said yes, only for the simple fact that our credit was shot. We were having a difficult time finding a place to stay after our lease ending. And where we were currently staying, um, the owner was selling. So there was no way we would, we could renew our lease with uh, the current place we were staying at. So we were in limbo trying to find a place to stay. And I didn't want my children to be caught up in that. So I just went on ahead and decided to just let them stay in the, uh, with their grandma and their aunt for the summer. And I told my husband, I said, they can stay for the summer, but they have to come back home to Austin for school. He was like, cool. So, unbeknownst to me, it was their plan all along to lure me into allowing the kids to stay for the summer. And it was a part of their plan to try to in this crafty, sneaky, conniving way take my children away from me so they can paint this false picture and narrative that I'm a bad mom that I abandoned my children that I don't take care of them those kind of things that they, they tried to do it so that they could get my children permanently and just completely shut me out of my children's life that's what they wanted to do and um when I let my daughter go stay for the summer she already knew she was on punishment for having bad grades during the pandemic she already knew that me allowing her to stay in Treeport for the summer was a privilege. She knew that that was a treat. She knew that she really wasn't supposed to be going anywhere for the summer. But because of the circumstances, um, it went in her favor for her to be able to go stay for the summer. But when summer ended, my daughter was angry at me for no reason that I could find necessary or even reasonable like okay yeah kids get mad at their parents for putting them on punishment sure but like this wasn't that kind of anger it wasn't that kind of angry it was more of like a you're a bad mom i hate you you're horrible you're abusive kind of anger and i don't know where that came from it just it came out of nowhere out of left field now mind you when my child left we were on good terms when my child and i left we were close we were close as mother and daughter my daughter and i we were like this we were tight so even though we were like this and we were tight i still did my job as her mom and put her on punishment when she didn't do good in school or when she misbehaved or whatever i still you know i still did my part as her mom to discipline her when she needed discipline but all of a sudden after i let her stay for the summer all of a sudden there was this turn, this twisted, like, change, like, that came out of nowhere. All of a sudden, my daughter hated me for for what reason I could not fathom and for, for, for no reason that made any sense to me. But when I thought about it long and hard enough and I had enough time to think and reflect, it, it dawned on me where, where all that hatred and and that dark stuff that was uh, developed in my daughter, where it all came from, her grandmother, my mother-in-law, my husband's mother, was saying things to my child behind my back about me that wasn't true. My mother-in-law was turning my child against me. My mother-in-law took what my, my daughter and I had and made it dark. She took my daughter and I's relationship and train wrecked it, ruined it, and filled my child's head up with all these lies. They say, you know, 
You're not supposed to use children as pawns to get back at each other. You're not supposed to talk bad about the parents in front of the children. But unbeknownst to me, because I trusted these people, that's what my mother-in-law was doing to my daughter. Something that people always say that you should never do and shouldn't do, she was doing that to me and to my daughter. So now my daughter hates me because of these lies and made up stories that my mother-in-law pumped into my daughter's head. My daughter and I, our relationship is ruined because of this evil woman. My daughter hates me for a reason that she don't even know or understand because of this woman, because of the evil that's just active in this woman. The evil that is just active. And what makes it even worse is her father, my estranged husband, He's a, he was in on it too. So he was probably telling her things about me that wasn't true also to try to get our child to turn against me and to hate me and disconnect from me. Just so that he can feel like he's an accomplished parent. So that he can feel like he's the better parent. Unbeknownst to me, my husband and his mother was in competition with me, unbeknownst to me. So after I had been in Shreep, not in Shreveport, but in Austin for two months straight, stranded with no place to live yet because I was waiting on my tax return to come to pay off the debt so that way I can get a new place to stay. But the tax return hadn't come yet. But I ended up getting sick with my IBS and I ended up running out of money so I could no longer pay for hotels. So my husband, being the narc that he is, he goes, why don't you just come and stay with me at my mom's and I'll help you get you know, better again with your IBS and help you get back healthy again. And um, why don't you just come stay with me? We'll find a place to stay and we'll work on our family and our relationship, yada, yada, yada. But this was all... It was all a game just to get me to do what he wanted me to do because that's what his mother wanted. Do you understand? Like, he really wasn't trying to help me with my IBS. That was all a part of the lie to try to talk me into moving to Shreveport. So when I finally got to Shreveport and I felt this, like, heaviness in the air, I felt this heaviness in that house. And um, I was sitting on the bed one day and my mother-in-law was saying to my husband, her son, she was, and she said it real loud, loud enough for me to hear it on purpose. This is how evil this woman is, y'all, I promise. She goes, why is she here? I don't want her here. Ever since she been here, you've been acting different. And ever since she been here, you just been changing up. You changed. This is what she's saying to him in the other room while I'm in the other room listening. And she's saying it loud enough for me to hear. And she goes, I don't know why you have her here. I didn't want this woman in my house. And he goes, well, there's nothing I can do about it now. She's already here. What do you want me to do about it now? She's already here. Now, mind you, he was the one who asked me to come down there. And he was the one who begged me to come down there. And he was the one who claimed that he was going to help me get on my feet again and help me get through my IBS sickness and all this, that, and the third. And he was going to get our family back together and get things right. But unbeknownst to me, he had me come down there without her knowledge, without her permission. And me coming down there was a big like shock to her because what she really wanted was not for me to be down there she just wanted my kids and her son down there so she can have my kids and her son to herself and completely just x me out of the equation unbeknownst to me this is what she really wanted unbeknownst to me now my husband her son he knew what she wanted he just was keeping that information away from me keeping me in the dark about it because he wanted to get his his way too, you see, see, he wanted things to be a certain way and she wanted things to be a certain way. He wanted to have his cake and eat it too. He wanted to have me over here on the side 
to keep to keep his personal happiness going on. But on the other side, she didn't want me over there for her personal selfish evil reasons. So mother and son clashed because mother and son had different agendas. Mother and son wanted different things. See, he wanted me down there because he wanted me down there for his own personal narcissistic reasons. She did not want me over there for her own personal narcissistic reasons. Okay. So then after I heard her say all that to him, loud, on purpose, enough for me to hear it, I was like, okay, wow. So all this darkness and thickness in the air that I've been feeling, I wasn't feeling it for nothing. God allowed me to feel what I felt to basically give me a spiritual warning, like, hey, this is what you're walking into. Be careful. So when she said that it was confirmation of what I was feeling, the day I w walked into that house, the day I came over there, the hard, nasty looks I was getting from her, that just that negative energy that was just spewing out of her, I felt it. Then one night she sat at the table and she was like, and you sabotaged my mama's house. Now, mind you, when my husband and I first got married, we were 22 and 23 years old. We were very young. She begged me and her son begged me to go down there to stay in her mother's house because wouldn't nobody stay in it. And the only way that that house would stay alive is if somebody go live in it because without nobody living in it, that house was just going to break, you know, break down, fall apart. To, to, so to stop that house from falling apart. She, my mother-in-law, she begged me to go move into that house with her son. She, she the one who talked to me into going down to Arkansas to go stay in that house with her son. In the beginning, I was like, nah, I don't want to do that. Cause you know, I'm a California girl. I was a Californian at heart. I was not leaving California. I didn't know anything except California. And yes, I had left California, left and went to New York and I went to Nevada and I went to a couple of states, but California was my home. You know, my California was where my heart was at. I was not leaving California to go move anywhere. So to make a long story short, I finally gave in and agreed to move to Arkansas with my husband in my mother-in-law's mother's house, my husband's grandmother's house. And we stayed there for like four and a half years. The first two years we stayed there rent-free and then the last two and a half years we were paying bills there. And um, it was around the time that I actually had gotten a job. And I remember she was getting on my case talking about, you need to get a job. Now, unbeknownst to her, I was the one who was on the computer looking for a job while her son was sitting around getting high, not looking for a job. But she had the nerve to get on my case like as if I wasn't looking for a job, like as if I was being irresponsible and like as if I was... Um, you know, like I was a piece of crap, but the person who was really a piece of crap was her son. Now, mind you, everything her son is, she always projected it onto me. And so did he. Everything that he was, he always projected it onto me. So if he was irresponsible, she claimed that I was irresponsible. If he made mistakes, she claimed that I was the one who made the mistakes. If he did wrong, she claimed that I was the one who did wrong. And everything he did, he did the exact same thing. He claimed that it was me doing it. So anyway, to make a long story short, we stayed in the house about four and a half years. And we had conceived our daughter and our son in that house. And we came back home to California when my daughter was 19 months old and my son was three months old. And... um. When we came back home to California, life took its course. Several years passed after we had came back home to California. And we're going to fast forward um, about 12 years later. Okay. And I say about 12, 13 years later, we're going to fast forward. And we're going to go back to the scene where I'm in Shreveport with them. And his mother, she sits at the table and she goes, you sabotage my mother's house. Now, mind you, while she's saying all this to me, she's drunk. She's laced up with alcohol. And she always gets, she always got laced up with alcohol whenever she had an argument with me or a fight with me or disagreement with me or some kind of altercation with me. She always was laced up or intoxicated with alcohol. So she's drunk. 
okay? And she, I'm already sitting at the table, at the kitchen table, and she walks over to the kitchen table and she sits down in front of me and she goes, and I don't appreciate how you sabotage my mother's house. Now, mind you, I did not sabotage her house the whole four and a half years I stayed in that house. We actually kept it up and running. It, it was life flowing through that house. And then when I left and came back home to California, that's when that house fell apart because nobody was living in it. So what she wanted to do was use me to keep her mother's house flowing and alive and stop it from falling apart. But then when I left and after I spent four and a half years of my life there, not really wanting to be there though, but I only agreed to move to Arkansas to make my husband happy and to help please his mom or whatever, trying to be this good, you know, new wife. So after I sacrificed four and a half years of my life to make him and her son, her and her son happy, you have the nerve 13, 12 to 14 years later, you have the nerve to sit here and accuse me of destroying your mom's house. When those entire four and a half years, I kept that house alive and flowing and breathing. But after we left, the house fell apart because mind you, nobody was living there after we left. Arkansas and went back to California after those four and a half years. The house slowly started to fall apart because nobody was living in it. So what did she do? She blames me for it and said, I, I destroyed her mom's house. But that's what that's what narcs do. They they tell lies on you and they blame you for things that happened or things that they did. So they can feel better about the, the actual truth. You know what I mean? <laughs> She told my children that I was a bad mom. She said bad things about me in front of my children on purpose. She has mentally brainwashed my children into believing bad things about me. That's not true. Her, her son cheated on me and lied about it. And for all I know, he could have a secret baby out there that I don't know about and my children probably don't know about. Um... He never had a job. He never worked. He never took care of me. I took care of him. And if it wasn't me taking care of him, when I was down, during the times I was down, it was his mother taking care of him and us. So it was always either his mom or me taking care of him. It was never him doing anything. And then he finally up and decided to get a job six months, seven months ago when him and I was in a custody battle. And it was only to make himself look and sound good in the court of law. This man never worked a job a day in his life. But he got the job to make himself look and sound good in court so he can make me look like a bad mom in court. And he went and got his own place, which is something he never did the whole time he was with me. But once again, it was to make himself look good in court. Now, after court was over, he took his place and got rid of it because he claimed that it was unsafe for our children. When really, I think the real truth behind why he got rid of his place is he didn't want to pay the rent anymore. And he begged me, you guys, he begged me to stay there because I was on my way to go back to Austin. Once my son got out the hospital, because um, my oldest son was real, real sick with Crohn's disease and we had just found out he had Crohn's disease. But I was on my way to get into my new place in Austin, which is where I'm at right now. Um, because after everything got bad and nasty between us, after the big fight, everything happened, the custody battle, everything happened. Um. Uh, I decided that I was just going to be living on my own and go back to Austin. But he begged me to not go to Austin, you guys. A place that my parents helped me get when after his mother and him put me on the street and threw me out and tried to paint me as this bad mom who never was never stable, don't have nothing. After they claimed all of this stuff on me, especially the mom, the mom was the ringleader of it because they were trying to take my kids away from me permanently so they can have my children to themselves. Um... Once they found out that I was actually getting my own place in Austin, he begged me to stay in his new place in Shreveport. But when I decided that I was not going to do that, he got mad. He got really mad, like boiling pissed. He slammed the door in my face. He told me to never come back again, this, that, and the third. <sighs> Excuse me. 
he begged me to stay with him in Shreveport, and I decided not to do that because I no longer wanted to stay behind and continue to keep allowing this man to abuse me and his mother to abuse me. I got tired of dealing with the abuse, so I stepped out on faith, and I went back to Austin, and I got my own place that my parents co-signed for me to get and helped me get. Only reason why I have any kind of peace of mind right now is because my parents helped me. My foster parents who raised me, they, they are the ones who co-signed for me to get my place. They are the ones who helped me get back on my feet again. They are the ones who fed me and my children when we was in a hotel after his mother put us out on the street. After his mother took the refrigerator from the house that I was staying in that um, she was renting um, so she could stop me from keeping my children's food cold. She took the refrigerator and then she had the landlord and the police show up to the house to force me to get out the house. Because all I needed was just time to get my own place in Austin again. That's all I needed. But she she was just so evil that she didn't want to give me the time that I needed to find a new place. So she had the Bossier City Police in, in uh, Louisiana and she had the landlord show up to the house forcing me to get out of there. Because mind you, she... Sorry. I got interrupted by a phone call, but mind you, she had moved to a whole new place um, and allowed her son and I to um, rent the house from her until we got our own place in our own name. So she was still the renter of that house, but she was renting out that house to her son and I, and she left that house and got her another rent house and went to Shreveport and left Bossier City. So really, she was doing that to help her son. She was not doing that to help me. And she said this on several occasions, that everything that she's ever done was to help her son and was not to help me. But she didn't have to tell me that for me to know that. Like, I already knew that in the back of my mind anyway, because I felt the negative energy, you know. But this woman is so evil and her son is so, like controlled by her and such her puppet and he's so ignorant to her and you know what he may not even be ignorant to her devices he probably knows his mother well enough to know what she's doing but he was just so he he needs her right you guys he needs her so much to the point that he's willing to put up with her evil and um, accept her evil because he needs her so he's willing to allow his mother to do all this evil to me because um he don't he don't want to cut off the person who he believes is serving him and giving him everything that he needs. So at the expense of me, um, he's hanging on to his supply, which is which is his mom. So I was his supply, but his mother was also his supply. And it's still his supply. But to make a long story short, this woman turned my child against me. My kids, they don't know the truth. But eventually, someday they will. And they think they think they could just do all kinds of evil and treat me any kind of way. And that there's not going to be any kind of consequences behind it. They think they could just do whatever they want, however they want, however much they want to, when they want to. And that they're not going to suffer any consequences. They think that they are above God. These people really think that they are above God. What does God's word say? Touch not my anointed. And they're going to find out sooner or later why not to touch God's anointed.